In this video, we're going to give you a quick introduction into the world of backend workflows. This general introduction is going to explain how they actually differ from regular workflows, when you should use them, and of course, we'll show you a quick demo of how you can actually create one. Now look, there is so much that we need to cover, so I'm going to hand this one over to Matt, and he's going to walk through all of these step-by-step -step instructions you need to know. Hey guys, so today we are going to look at an intro to backend workflows. So what is a backend workflow? Backend workflows are essentially workflows that are processed on the bubble server side. And this is in comparison to our normal workflows that are processed client side. So now there are some pros and some cons and definitely sometimes you should use them and sometimes you shouldn't be using them. One of the pros is that you'd be able to essentially send some workflows to the back end and the user will not have to wait for them to process and they can proceed without having to wait for all of these different steps to be ticked off. One of the cons about using them though is they are asynchronous calls, meaning that once it's been sent, it won't really pull real-time data. So let's go and have a look at how we can reduce some user wait time in a specific process of the signup and also how and why this would enhance security. So we're going to go over to our app and we're going to come have a look at this in a second. So the example we'll use today is when a user signs up. So the normal steps would be collect the user information, maybe show a pop-up and then they will be navigated to their dashboard or to their profile page to finish their setup or something. So sometimes you would actually need to go and add some of your own steps in that process, but it's not necessarily an option to go and add six or seven tasks in that flow when they actually aren't critical for that specific function. So an example here would be the user signs up, they go to the index, but I also need to send them a welcome email I need to trigger an automation on my business side. I maybe need to add them to a Slack channel and send them a message or even send them an SMS or WhatsApp. So depending on what your process is, you can now go and send these workflows to your backend. So the user can click sign up and they don't really have to wait for all of these things to go and check off. So let's see how we can go and activate this and use this within our specific apps. So we're going to go over here to our settings and we're going to go to API. Now, once we are here in our API section, we're going to look for this enable workflow API and backend workflows. So we're going to go here and we're going to click activate. Now we only need to enable the workflow and backend workflows. You don't really need to enable the Darty API for this. So now that we have that enabled, we're going to go back to our workflows and we're going to add in another element after sign the user up. That element is going to be schedule and API workflow. Okay, so I've already gone and created this, but normally we will first go over here in the left menu to our backend workflows, we'll go new API workflow, and we're going to call this new user sign up. Are we going to expose this as a public API workflow? No, but we are going to add in a key, and that key will be user, and the top will also be user. Cool, so now we have our specific data type that we are gonna pass in this API workflow. Now we're gonna go add a new element and let's say what we wanna do is send them a welcome email or maybe even a confirmation email. So we're gonna go over here to send confirmation email. Okay, so we haven't set up a confirmation page. So all we're gonna do here is send an email. Now we are going to look up here for our workflow data sources, and this will be user. 
and this will be user two. It'll be to their email that they've just added in the sign up process. Send a name will be uh, tutorial. I spelled that wrong. And you'll add in the rest of your kind of uh, email information. So now one thing that is quite useful for using the back end workflows is they are a lot more secure. So let's say I was sending sensitive information in this email. It would be a much better option to send it as a back end workflow and not as a normal workflow, which is operated through the client side. Okay. So now after I've sent that email, I would be able to add in the rest of my steps, like sending them a message, adding them to a specific group, maybe calling another API or just other steps that aren't necessarily critical for the actual user that's signing up. All right. So now when I would click sign up, it would essentially sign the user up. Then we need to schedule our API workflow. And the one that we just did is new user sign up flow. So the user would be the current user and the scheduled date would be current date or time. So now let's say you only want to send them that email in an hour or in a day. Then you can go over here and you can say plus minutes. Let's say you only want to send them two minutes. Or if you want to send it in an hour, let's say plus one. Okay. So those are the basic kind of elements that you can use in a user signup. And there are many more options or many more times when you would need to go and use a backend workflow. Another example would be if you have a long document and you now have some other functionality in your app, like creating multiple choice questions, or you need to go through a list. Now, you would have to send that to the backend workflow. Otherwise, to recreate that in a normal workflow would just create too many steps and also make the user wait, which is never a good thing. So there are a lot of different times when you can do this, and this would be for running through lists or doing recursive workflows. And these can save a lot of time and also make your app a lot more efficient. So we've gone through how to enable our back workflows. We've shown you a basic example of how to create a workflow and also the importance of setting up the specific keys and types that allow you to pass information from your front end workflows into your API or back end workflows. And just like that, you now have a better understanding of what back end workflows are and how you can utilize them within your own bubble app. If you found this video useful and you wanted to stay up to date with any additional bubble resources we share, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel so that way you can be the first to know whenever we drop a new tutorial. For now though, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this specific video and I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.